escalation. Recent events suggest mounting economic danger. It's by Brandon Smith via Alt Markets US on Zurich. A common refrain from people who are critical of alternative economists is that we have been predicting crisis for so long that eventually we will be right. These are generally people who don't understand the nature of economic decline. It's like an avalanche that builds over time that breaks and quickly escalates as it flows down the mountain. What they don't grasp is that they are in the middle of an economic collapse right now and they just can't see it because they have been acclimated to the presence of the snow and cold. Economic decline is a process that takes many years and while you might get and even like the market crash of 1929 or the crash of 2008, these moments of panic are nothing more than the wreckage left behind by the great wave of tumbling ice that everyone should have seen coming far in advance, but they refused. In 2022, the job of warning people is far easier than it used to be because we are well past the midpoint of the process of decline. But believe it or not, I still get people today who claim that we analysts are doom mongers, quote unquote. The power of willful ignorance is truly amazing. It's enough to make a person blind to stagflationary crisis, supply chain disruptions, quickly inflating prices, stock market carnage, bond market instability, record consumer debt and international conflict. At this point, I think if a person can't see the dangers ahead, they are probably a waste of time and space and are destined to be buried in the, in the ice and there's nothing that can be done for them. Yes, there are some people out there that don't get exposed to the information and we have to take them into account, but my priority will be people that are awake and aware and try to give them a sense of that, of what point in the collapse process we find ourselves. In the past month, there have been a considerable uptick in economic and geopolitical activity that suggests we're entering a new phase and not surprisingly, it's all accumulating right before we hit October. And here are the events that I find most concerning. The European energy crisis. This is an event that I've been predicting since the Russian conflict with Ukraine. Now it's upon us. I wrote about it extensively in my recent article, Europe is facing energy disaster and it's going to bleed over into the US. So I won't rehash all that information here. What I do want to point out is the complete lack of planning on the part of European officials to deal with the threat. It's as if they want a full spectre disaster. Russia has now completely cut off natural gas supplies to Europe, which represent about 40% of all EU energy sources. Europe's benchmark natural gas prices spiked 28% a week ago, on top of an already existing inflation. Oil supplies are also in deep decline for Europe, and the EU government has pledged to cut what's left of Russian oil imports by sea at the end of the year. Sadly, have, they have offered a very little way of solutions to the su supply side problem. There's been talk of increasing imports of alternative resources from other nations, but the EU is already buying up around 75% of all liquid natural gas from the US. OPEC oil producers have indicated they will not be attempting to increase production anytime soon, probably because they can't due to inflation in operation costs. There's no backup energy resource for Europe. It does not exist right now. They'll try to buy up whatever coal, oil and gas they can find on the market while driving up prices even more for other countries they will still come up short, which means people are going to freeze this winter. Best case scenario is that there are mostly mild temperatures and people barely scrape by with minimum heating, but EU industry is going to suffer and many manufacturers are going to cut production, which means more stress on the global supply chain, let alone people losing their jobs. That's my comment. Core inflation is still rising. As I warned in, last week in my article, it's a fact that needs repeating. The Federal Reserve is a suicide bomber. Inflation is continuing to rise despite the Fed's continued interest rate hikes, giving the central bank even more ammunition to justify higher rates into extreme economic weakness. The latest CPI print showed an increase of 8.3% in less inflation and was a shock to markets which universally expected a drop. This is the nature of stagflation. Even with falling demand prices, 
continue to climb or remain high for extended periods. The stagflation event of the 1970s lasted for a decade until the Fed jacked rates to 21%, and then employment crumbled in the early 1980s. This does not mean that rates will go to 21% this time. They don't need to. All it would take is a Fed fund rate to be of around 4% to 5% to crash our current QE addicted system. A 75 base points rate hike is now widely expected at the Fed meeting this month, with some predicting 100 base point hike. This would put us close to crash territory for markets and for employment, though I think we still have well into 2023 before unemployment really starts to spike. Putin's meeting with Xi. As I write this, Vladimir Putin is set to meet with China's Xi Jinping, and the nature of the conference is not clear. There are obvious points of agreement, such as China's continued purchases of Russian oil and other commodities, as well as the ongoing plan to build a pipeline to China by 2025. There's also strategic cooperation, which is evident in the recent naval exercise between the two nations around Japan and Taiwan. The timing of the meeting is concerning to me because the prime season for a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan is fast approaching. Now, um, this, there's also issues with Ukraine and arms sales. With the amount of propaganda coming from Ukrainian intelligence and NATO, it's hard to say what exactly is happening. Um, this would make Ukraine especially essentially unlivable in the coming winter for most of the population. Now, if the manure is about to hit the fan in Taiwan, along with Ukraine, then diplomatic and economic ties will be severed and Western access to Chinese manufacturing will be cut. It's a problem for China, China economy, certainly, which may be why they have continued their mass COVID lockdowns well after every other government has abandoned them. Could this be practice for civil controls? Now, China's global dominance and import exports gives them considerable economy level, leverage in trade. However, many nations would not support sanctions against them. Also, their vast holdings of U.S. dollars and treasuries could be used as a weapon to damage or destroy the dollar's world reserve status. If China invades Taiwan this year, then all bets are off. The economic decline will move swiftly from that point on. There are many other trends which factor into the crash environment, but the above factors are the most recent and hold the biggest potential for causing a domino effect globally. The question that always arises is, what can we do about it, quote unquote? Not much in terms of prevention. What can we do, though, is prepare locally to weather the storm. This means stocking necessities before they rise even further in price or become non-existence, non-existent, become a producer and learn a valuable skill for survival in a depleted economy, organize with people locally who are on the same page to create security and alternative trade opportunities. Hopefully, the aware citizenry will rise to the challenge and organization will be extensive because the worst case scenario would be great masses of completely isolated people all vying against each other rather than working towards mutual security. Even in a slow collapse scenario, this is a problem in terms of rising crime, so plan on working with others if you want to avoid inevitable third world conditions. And uh, this is from uh, Alt Market, US, authored by Brandon Smith on Zero Hedge. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.